My name is Feng Zhang, and I am a assistant professor at MIT. I am also an investigator at the Montgomery Institute for Brain Research, and also a core faculty member at the Broad Institute. I come from a, a more engineering background, where I think about how to take things apart, and then put them together, and then try to fix it. Um, so I want to take a similar approach to studying the brain. So we can take apart the brain by developing new technologies and tools to look at how different components of the brain work. And then through doing that, we can understand disease mechanisms and then be able to fix the brain to provide benefits for human health. The current animal models that we use for studying brain disorders are very limited. Um, most of them are not very precise. So what we are able to do now, and we hope to do in the future, is to look at mutations, genetic mutations, or other type of epigenetic modifications that are found in human disease, and then to model those exact changes within the animal. So we can take an animal and then modify that animal's genome to uh, reflect the change that we see, the mutation that we see in the human cell, and then see whether or not those human mutations manifest in some type of animal behavioral change. And through using that kind of more uh, human-inspired or human-disease-inspired animal model, then we can be much more precise and make sure that we are really looking at disease mechanisms that are uh, relevant to human conditions. So one of the projects that I work on in my research is to design proteins that can bind to specific sequences of DNA. Um, those are called DNA binding proteins. Um, basically, they are proteins that can search along a strand of DNA and then anchor itself to a site that we program the protein to bind. And the specific kind of DNA binding protein I work with is called tau effector. Uh, it's a naturally occurring protein, um, but we take that from natural microbial organism and then we tweak it so that we can make it bind to any kind of DNA sequence we want it to recognize. So being able to engineer DNA binding proteins to recognize specific programs on the genome allow us to begin to interpret and to tease apart what are the different instructions that the genome encodes. And once we understand uh, all those different instructions, then we can take a more synthetic approach and combine different known functions in new ways to do new things. One thing that we are working on is to use stem cells uh, derived from patients who have specific kinds of disease, uh, especially psychiatric disease. So what we can do is to take the skin cells from those patients and then convert them into a stem cell-like cell. So they're called induced pluripotent stem cell. And by generating these kinds of stem cells from those patients, we can then convert the stem cell into neurons or other kinds of cell types and then to study uh, brain disease. And by combining that approach with the genetic engineering technology that we're developing right now, we can look at possible mutations that may be causing a disease and then use our technology to take out that mutation, to correct it, and see whether or not that mutation really is causing the disease state. Therapeutically, um, this is going to be many years away, but the ultimate goal is to be able to fix mutations within the genome or correct other kinds of molecular genetic changes that cause disease in people. So I think in the next decade or two, we'll really see a lot of progress in terms of molecular, real mechanistically based treatments for mental problems.